Hello. In the moment you get in contact with acoustic engineering, you get in contact with decibels. Everyone used dB scaling. Why is there always this dB scaling? Why do you just can measure the sound pressure with a millibar or a hectopascal, whatever? What the hell is this dB scaling about and what it is meant for? I will explain the idea behind, the reason, the motivation why we have to use decibel. And then you will say, oh, this is clever. I got it now. Stay tuned. If you want to compare maybe the weight of this smartphone with the weight of this smartphone, this is 150 gram and this is a little bit bigger, weights 180 gram. In comparison, I would say, well, this has 30 gram more weight. So what I do by instinct, I subtract 180 minus 150 and the difference is 30 gram. If I compare the weight of the smartphone with maybe the weight of this power bank, which has a weight of 300 gram, I would say, well, it's weight at twice as much. It has double the weight of the smartphone. So what I do quite natively, I make a ratio between this weight and the other weight. 300 gram divided by 150 gram gives me a ratio of two, okay? Here the unit is gone, it's just a ratio. And this is human thinking. So in the moment when there's a bigger difference between the one and the other, you don't make a difference, you make a ratio. Keep this in mind. And it works quite well if there are big differences. Like I'm five times faster with a bicycle than by foot. Or a lorry weights 40 times more than a car. Okay, it's fine. No unit, everyone understands it. So let's do this also in Acoustics. So what we do in acoustic, we measure the, the change of sound pressure level and compare it with a reference P0, which is the point where you just are able to hear something. It's 20 mu pascal, really small. Actually, it's not the right value, but hey, this is a global standard. Everyone uses it, so keep it, <laughs> all right? So if you measure something, it could be a ratio of one. Or it's the smallest you can just hear. Or it could be 10 times higher. That's quite fine. It could be 100 times bigger, wow. But there's more in acoustics. It could be 1000 times bigger. It could be 10,000 times bigger. It could be 100,000 times bigger. It's, it's a massive range. It's, it's like we have the ocean here. And on top, there could be very small waves, but there can also be bigger waves and really huge waves. You know, okay, the difference is so huge. Okay, they can even be a million times bigger. Just write this down. This is a one with six zeros behind, okay? So if I make a measurement, <laughs> I have to count the number of zeros. This is a one, two, three, four, five, okay? And this is a one, two, three, four, oh, this is 10 times bigger, okay? So I'm ending up counting zeros in front of the decimal point. That is not handy. So. It, the engineer would be clever and say, write this down as a one digit number. So this is a one. And how many times should I have to multiply this with a 10? So this is five. So 10 should be added five times. Then it's the same number. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a one with six times multiplied with 10. So after recording, the first information I need to know is how big is the decade? Is this five times or six times? Is this 10, 100, 10,000, 100,000 times bigger than the reference? I don't want to count every time the numbers. So it's quite clever to get just the number directly. And there is a mathematic operation. It's called logarithmic, okay? Just type this. So what I do is I calculate the ratio of the pressure I measured in reference to my reference line, and then just calculate the logarithmic by the power of 10. This leads me to a five, okay? Or in this example, really extremely loud, then it will be a six. So the full range of acoustics just broke down to a range from zero up to five or up to six. Actually, I think we have overdone it. I mean, it feels like it's a school grade from A to F. <laughs> Even this is too rough. Maybe normally you'd go A minus and B plus. We need more space. Otherwise you would end up with, it's a 5.36 against 
0.31. So you always look behind the decimal points and people don't like to look behind the decimal points. Okay, this is normal. Um, people like to have numbers between zero and 100. For example, Celsius grad. At zero degree, the water freezing and at 100 degree, the water is boiling. I got that. It is easy. Yeah? Or you get 20% discount. I got this. You don't get a fifth part discount. What? And you don't get an 0.2 discount. No, all you gotta do is <laughs> you just multiply the number with 100 and of, from 0.2 it's get to 20 percentage. And that is working. So what we gotta do is we have to make it a little bit bigger. And that's what Mr. Bell also thought. Okay, to make it usable, make it bigger. It's like if this distance is 1.2 meters and I don't like like they have the decimal point in there. I just multiply it with 10 and it's not just 1.2 meter, then it's 12 DC meters. Huh. And the decimal point is gone. Let's do this. So I just multiply my formula with 10. And then it's not a bell anymore, then it's a DC bell. Ah, sound familiar? You got it? Right. So that's it. It's DC bell or short writing is just DB. Okay, so we got now the range artificially raised up from 50 or it's extremely painful loud noise, it's 60, which works much better than the small numbers. Well, this formula here, 10 times logarithmic of this ratio, works good for energy or power related values. What in acoustics we measure the change of pressure. So this is the big ocean, okay? And we don't measure the real value of the real depth of the ocean. It's far away. We only measure the changes here on top and lower of the waves. So um, in average, this line, the sinus wave would be zero. That's not really interesting. The maximum could be, of course, here the peak values, but this is not, it's only short time working. So what we do, we want to get the energy which is inside of this wave. So we measure the effective pressure, it's something in here, the effective value, or normally called the RMS value. That stands for root mean square. Root mean square, it's an average value. And if you multiply this value, root mean square, with its own, so if I make a square on top, then you get a value which is equivalent to the energy inside of this wave. So it's right to use the square of our measured values. So we use square on our measurement and use the square also on our reference. It could be out of the bracket. Hold on. There was a rule with logarithmic. Oh, if the two is there, it could also be just, and it's the same if I just write it in front. So it's twice <laughs> the 10 time of logarithmic. It's exactly the same. So for acoustic values like pressure, it can be up and down or voltage. It can also be positive, negative. There's an additional two needed, which means that our values would not be 50 in this example. This will be 100 or if it's a million times bigger uh, it will be 120 decibel and now we got a range from 0 up to 100 0 up to 120 and that's what the people like to use good idea so the final equation we need to calculate the sound pressure level in decibel is this one db value is 20 times the 10th logarithm of the measured effective pressure of a sound in relation to our reference value, the sound pressure at which we just can hear something, our hearing threshold. That is the formula you should have in mind talking about acoustics. So by using this logarithmic trick, we are able to have this wide dynamic range in acoustic that we measure. A soft noise is the weight of a fly in comparison to a loud noise which is the weight of an elephant. It's million times more weight. To keep this without counting any digits, numbers here, yeah? just to keep this in a range from zero to 100, 120, yeah? logarithmic scaling is the best way to do this. And there's more to it. If you use this to calculate with that, it's much easier than to multiply it. Now we can just add it, plus 6 dB. It's so easy to understand instead of multiplying with something else. I will 
do this in an extra video, just the next one. And then you understand, especially for diagrams, it's so brilliant to have a logarithmic scaling in acoustics. And you will love it. It's good, believe me. See you. Maybe I should make a copy of this if someone asks again.